Hey everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, anabolicdoc.com and metabolicdoc.com, both of which you can get this excellent book, America on Steroids, The Time to Heal. Great read. It took me about three weeks to read because I only read while I eat. And uh, yeah, I know I eat like 10 times a day, but still. So, how are you, sir? What's going I'm on? Doing excellent. Big week, tired. We... We're down in Florida. We're this close to closing the deal on two or three properties for the Fort Lauderdale opening of the Metabolic Doc office. And have you uh, cloned yourself? Do you have a few uh, O'Connor clones ready to go? Go. assembly? So here's the, here's, the, here's the deal. Here's the news here. Yeah. So going down there, and I'll be going down there probably about mm -hmm. one week out of every month. Yep. And seeing all my patients down there. I mean, I have so many patients from Florida. They have to come all the way up here. Right. So it's going to be better. So we're I'm, I'm, I'm bridging and we're opening up down there. And then within six months, the plan is for me or maybe, you know, more or less, I'm going to have uh, another doctor training. Yeah. I, I'm going to have so I'm, I'm going to have the, the training, the anabolic metabolic clone. <laughs> well, and we're starting, and I tell you, my goal is very straightforward. I'm everyone knows what I do. I'm the doc that takes care of men that are using steroids and men on testosterone, focusing on their health, obviously. And I'm de my my objective of Florida is to give people men. You know, I'm going to give them an alternative to anti aging facilities. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to make that a whole subject? Because I think anti aging. I think we should do a whole show on that. Sooner or later. On, yeah. let's do it. I, I've I've done it. I did a video on my social media. Yeah. And that's that's one. You know, I, I don't know. Like you, I have like there's so many, there's so many. It's hard to character. You have to like categorize them now. But yeah. I did a video. But Ron, let's definitely dedicate. I would love to answer because half of my patients now are coming in, men on TRT from anti aging places that are frankly they're very upset and they're they're not satisfied. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think you should use the air quotes when you say TRT in reference to these places. They're on, quote, TRT, because oh, right. I have a good friend who's on two grams of gear a week that he gets <laughs> from one of these places from Florida, you know, he's getting Ron, the guy, all this crap. I'm always trying to be politically correct and trying not to be, you know, especially around Europe, because you're such a, you know, people have told me, God, Ron, is, Ron just doesn't put, he doesn't hate, he accepts everything, he just... Oh. So it's like I try, I, I can get crazy, so I'm trying to be okay. I am I mean, let's just call it what it is, Ron. I'm cleaning up a big mess. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I'm just telling you guys what it is. You should see the stuff that comes in here. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this to the viewers right now. Uh, I encourage some of you guys out there, any of you who have had, uh, you know, experiences with these places that you're not entirely happy with, and you have issues about that that you'd like the doctor to address, submit some questions like that. I'd, I'd like some specific, specific cases and concerns from these people as to why they weren't being, uh, you know, serviced properly, cared for properly, because, you know, they, they're not being examined by doctors, yet they're being prescribed Unreal. tons and tons of medications is what they are. Ron, uh, that is what, that right there is a whole show and you know it's like it seems like the guys don't care and, and they're just using it to get the gear which if that's what you want to do never come never come to see me ever <laughs> right 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 because we're, we're not going to get along but, but <laughs> if you care about your heart and you want to actually live on testosterone as long as you can like me and enjoy your life and feel great yeah. um you you want to have a doctor that's going to be more like your primary care doctor okay so uh, my news from this week, at your ur constant urging slash nagging, I finally uh, made an appointment. You know, I saw a cardiologist and had him order a CAT scan. So earlier this week, I went down to Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital in Boston on the Longwood Complex, which is a billion hospitals all packed into a, a few square blocks. Had the CAT scan done, and uh, I wasn't supposed to meet with the doctor to go over it until June, but he called me up a couple hours ago. Don't worry. It's, it's a, he said uh, there was some calcium showing in the right coronary artery, so uh, he's ordering a stress test for me. Wow. And he said most likely he's going to put me on uh, statin like Crestor or Lipitor to uh, you know. Ron, keep me, keep me what's the numbers? What's the number? 
I don't know. We don't want. I, you gotta tell me the good. number. You gotta give us the number. I, I don't know the number, but uh, it's a calcium <laughs> score number. But see, yeah, yeah. look how amazing this, Ron. This is gonna freaking save your life, sir. I know. And the yeah. guys at Beth Israel, guys, those are not stupid. Those are not dummies. No, no. And if you didn't do that, now let me ask you another question. Did did you get an echocardiogram so we could see the size of your left ventricle? Uh, so what's the one? What's the one where they hook up just electrodes to? What's that called? EKG. That's not it. That's nothing. I had an electrocardiogram two and a half years ago. I thought it was longer because you know he had all my records there because it was done at the same the, the different Beth Israel the one in Needham. Uh, I had one done there and um, there was some thickening of the. Uh, that left ventricle, or you know, one of the one of the walls was a little thick, but they said at the time it was nothing to be concerned about. Okay, so. well, so so that, but that's the that's LVH. Yeah. So it, 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 you know my crazy stuff, Ron. All day long, you just if you have if you'd want to be on a little small dose of an ACE inhibitor, I mean, this is all the stuff that these cardiac experts that I work with recommend to my patients right. that, that I'm taking care of because you know I didn't learn this overnight. I mean, I'm an internist. I'm not a cardiologist, but I love the study of cardiology and preventing patients from seeing a cardiologist. So you're going to get some. You got. We got to know the number of the plaque, the the score of the number. Calcium score number. Gotcha. We're, we're going to keep this going, Ron. We're going to keep. Yeah, this I'll get more info. Don't worry. Every week I'll find out something new. And, and, uh, and then you're going to tell us like what he's going to prescribe. See, Ron, this is a, this is beautiful, buddy. Yeah. It's awesome, you know children. You're going to live. And then hopefully you'll tolerate the statin. You're not going to get like muscle cramps or muscle aches. And I'm going to walk, we're going to we're going to work you through it. The doc will work you through. I'll work you through. We'll do it live. Okay. Now, uh, these an ACE inhibitor and a statin are those the same thing or are those? Different? No, 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 no. The ACE inhibitor is is a is a blood pressure medicine, but it's classically used for men that are even asymptomatic without having blood pressure. But if you even I'd be amazed if your blood pressure is perfect. It is though. That's the weird okay. thing. Yeah. The, the, then that's then that, that is what it is. You can't argue data. Now, so I've, I've, I've I've never had my blood pressure pressure taken when I've been on an oral oral like Dianabol or Anadrol, okay. and I can feel. Yeah. You know, when you bend over to tie your shoes and your head feels like it's going to explode, <laughs> I think that's a direct, and you're red all the time. I think that's a pretty clear sign that your blood pressure is elevated. So you know, I, I've had it at times, sure. So, so, but if your blood pressure is sitting like this, yeah. you're just so to your doc and you're, you're in your house and, you know, you can get a blood pressure cuff that's a very good one and if you can check it to make sure it's calibrated. Yeah. And if you do that and your blood pressure is good, so game on. Okay. But, so, but, but, but what I've seen the cardiology experts, what they do for a man, a man that's 40 something young and he's, or he's big and this is the stuff that no one really knows. He's used some steroids, so you, it's hard to know that your steroid use has is contributed to the growth of that ventricle, but the truth is, Ron, it probably has. Yeah, I, I, the, I don't doubt it. I mean, it's a muscle, Ron. Right. It's, 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 a, it's not skeletal muscle. It's, it's, it's called cardiac muscle, so myocytes. And yeah. if the data came out of Harvard, your place right there, there's, there's a doctor there that did just last year he did a study and showed anabolic steroid users have left ventricle hypertrophy. Sure. So that that and certainly it, that will lead to complications, and I'm not going to bullshit you. Heart failure later on. Right. So you, what I'm seeing is this is what this is what what I do for my patients. I get an echo. I get the coronary if CAT scan, the coronary CAT scan. Of yep. course, EKG. We do the blood pressure, lipids, lab, everything. And then I put it planted. I saw two new patients today. I'm exhausted. They're <laughs> great guys. They're both patients that have been on testosterone for probably 15 years. They're men that are late 40s, early 50s, and they're coming from anti-aging facilities, and they want me now. Mm -hmm. So none of these guys have had the focused heart care like this. Right. But testosterone affects the heart. Mm -hmm. How do you – anyway, but, Ron, you're going to do great. But to see that, if you didn't go for that, Ron – that plaque is going to build up. Forget steroids and testosterone. You're a man. It just it accelerates in men anyway. Anyway, that's it. Good job, Ron. I'm happy. Hey, you don't have a CAT scan machine on site there, do you? No, it's I, I wouldn't. I never will. These are million. These are one one million, two million. I I I subcontract all my workout to to Quest, LabCorp for Labs, Cardi. I use real doctors all around the United States. 
Yeah. That's radiology. And like I would, right. that's a radiology service. Yeah, that thing looked to me, I was, I was asking the tech what she thought it would cost, and she goes, I don't know, a lot. You know, it looks oh, like Ron, a machine? time machine. Oh, the machine, Ron? Yeah, the machine. Uh, I don't know, 1.5 to $3 million. I would have thought more. <laughs> or maybe more. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, $10 million, it, I wouldn't have blinked. It, 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 I mean, you see, that's no joke. So I use that, but guess how much did it cost you? I don't know yet. I'm sure I'm going to get something in the mail soon, though. But so I, you know. let me just tell you this. It's not a CT angiogram. You didn't have a CT angio done. He didn't put, they didn't do IV dye, right? They did a calcium. No. So right. you did a good job. You got a very low radiation CAT scan of the chest looking for calcium in their artery. This is brilliant. It sh you know what it costs my guys when I order it? $99. How much? 99 bucks. Okay, that's not bad. So if it's more than that, you, you, there's something going on. Your insurance won't pay for it, and we're not going to get involved with all the hate yeah. insurance and all the. <laughs> it, it just, it just that's a whole other show. Yeah, because, I have pretty good. Ron and I, you, we can go into that, Ron. I'm sure that would be a good show. My but, wife works for Costco, so I can't complain. The insurance is pretty. pretty it's damn good. pretty good, actually. Costco, I'm finding out around the Northeast, they have testosterone for sixty bucks a ten mil vial. <laughs> this is great yeah, stuff. Man, that's the price on the Costco that's, pharmacy Android gel kept going up and up. That's uh. Like one reason they stopped using it. But yeah. yeah. What'd but you say? I, How much is the 10 cc bottle? 60 bucks. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, I can get it on the street for for 70. Some DC stuff. <laughs> that is true. You can get you can get raped for 100, 150, but that's what you can get. You get it all. Just, just so you know, street value for one of those these days is about 60 to 80 dollars is average. So that's <laughs> that's amazing. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Wow! You can always count on me, Doc. I'll give you. I'll give you. I need. Answer. I need the broology. You're my broologist. Whatever you want to know, you can ask me. So let's get to some questions from the uh, forum. Samo, good day to you, Doctor and Mr. Ron. Hey, Samo. I hope you guys are doing well. I've been following Ask the Anabolic Doc episodes on YouTube, and I thank you very much for both of you for giving us your precious time to answer questions. My question is: I'm a 39-year-old male from Egypt. I've been suffering from low energy, sex drive, and mood swings for more than a year. I went to see an endocrinologist. I'm now in India. He ordered some blood tests, CBC, lipid, sugar, vitamin profile, sperm analysis, prolactin, cortisol, thyroid, IH, FSH, estradiol, free and total T. All came back good except for prolactin, estradiol, total test, and free test. Prolactin was 15.42 nanograms per milliliter. Normal range for males is 2.64 to 13.13, so he was a little high on that. Estradiol was 94.33 peak, what says picograms per the PG? Yeah. I don't know what that is. So uh, he was 94.33, normal is uh, less than 39. Uh, free testosterone was 11.36, normal range is 13 to 40, so he's a little low there. Total T was 1.02, normal, that's odd, it must be... Is that right? Total testosterone was just 1.02 nanograms per milliliter. Yeah, this, this is in Europe. Th these guys use different uh, ranges. Okay, because so normal range on that would be 2.41 to 8.27. FSH was 4.26. Normal range is 1.27 to 19.26. So he's in the normal range for that. LH was 2.53. Normal range, he's, he's good. 1.24 to 8.63. He continues, the endocrinologist put me on test depot, one gram slash four ml, testosterone undecorate every two months. Wow. So yeah. he's getting a, wow. Okay, I'm sure you get, okay, so he's on one gram. This is going to be a good one. One gram of test undecorate every two months for six months and visit him again. I asked him to put me on test E or SIP instead, but he refused. He said test is test, and I shouldn't be so picky. I had my first shot three days ago. It was painful. It still hurt. My question is, for next shot, can I replace Test Depot, 1 gram slash 4 ml, with Test E, 250 milligrams, or SIP every two weeks for any type of test? I want frequent injections rather than once in two months. I can get testosterone from a pharmacy in India with no doctor prescription required. Thank you in advance. Much love. Well, a bunch of guys are picking up and moving to India right now. I'm pretty sure of that. Wow, wow. <laughs> Well, this is, I mean, the guy that, you know, Ron, we're reaching the guys in Egypt, man. This is great. Yeah. Egypt. India, Egypt. Wow. The India and <laughs> Egypt. So this is a nice man. This is, so let's, let's, let's tease it out for the science. I mean, this guy's got hypogonadism. So his free testosterone total is low. Yeah. You see that? 
Yeah. On the scale. And this is, again, I don't know. We don't know anything. I'm trying to think. My first question is like, why is this guy so low? And it's just one test. And I don't know if it's liquid chromatography, mass spectroscopy, like we do in America. I mean, in Egypt, they have smart guys there. And they have, I mean, this is in, over in Asia and, and Arab Emirates. And I've, I've talked to patients all over the world all the time. It is kind of funky to get around some of these reference ranges, though, for me. Because mm. we just don't do it, but it's all about kind of sometimes moving the decimals around and stuff. But I assume the, the, those those are the, I've seen these ranges in Europe, so that's what he has. So he has low T. But the yep. interesting piece is you see those FSA. The L, now this is bro. This is it's actually real science. This is bro uh, bro science. You yep. see the FSH and LH. They're normal. Th those are normal. So w when you when you characterize hypogonadism, you characterize it based on what's going on in the pituitary. Hmm. And if your pituitary is either low, that's called secondary hypo, hypogonadism. Yeah. Or it's either high, it means your pituitary is cranking up. And it's very rel it's very much the same for thyroid diagnosis based on what's going on with TSH. Yeah. These things come out of the anterior pituitary. It's very basic, Ron, very simple. So if, you're, if your gonadotropins from the pituitary are going up, that means your balls are failing. That's called primary. Hmm. If your testicles, something's wrong with Kleinfelters, or there's something wrong with your t trauma, there's something wrong with your testicles. Secondary hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, say that 10 times, is, no. is when, when you have low T, and then this is again, he's not some stuff that's not that's going on here that we're not getting the full picture on, but that's okay. We're going to answer his question because I, yeah. I have to guess, assume what's going on. So his pituitary is normal, but his T is low. So his pituitary is not doing anything. So th this is this is kind of this is this could be this is a classic case where anabolic steroid after using steroids when men come off the pituitary goes way up because the testicles are way down right. so it's trying to wake them up you understand that and it's easy to understand and yeah. th there is a certain point where the pituitary flattens out goes back to normal burns out and these are PhD molecular guys that we're working with to understand the animal models. And, and then, and then, in the end, you have, your pituitary is normal like this, but your testosterone is still low. <clears throat> so this this is kind of a normocytic, I think it's kind of like a workup for anemia. We have to characterize the way we do with the terminology. So he has low T. I mean, that's really low T. And that yeah. what else is going on, Ron? He's got high estrogen and prolactin. I'll bet you this is a guy who's steroid. Classic post-cycle stuff going on. <clears throat> But it's not right after the cycle; it's it's later. It's and it's his 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 so his hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis is definitely screwed up, and, mm. and he's converting to, so, to he has he has more estrogen than he does androgen, and prolactin is one of those other precursors and postcursors me metabolites, right? Yeah. You think of decodurabolin and Tren, and you got all and other steroids. Again, pick up the Bill Llewellyn book. This is all over this. And you don't learn the stuff in the day. You know that, Ron. This is not right overnight. You know, I think Bill and I should teach a course called Brawlology 101. <laughs> but so, so let me add, so that's, okay, so he has low T. I don't even understand why. I wish I knew why. He's young. He's probably steroid user. That's okay. Yeah. I, still, I still love him. I still love him. <laughs> oh, man. So, so he goes to the doc. The doc gives him, here's what they got, Ron. They have a syrup. They have long-acting injections called testosterone, testosterone undecanate, right? Yeah. That's what he So it's it's actually it's one gram in Europe. It's one gram every uh, three months. Wow. And it's, how, it's basically how lazy can you get? <laughs> yeah, no. So you know why they do it? Now the doc is beautiful. He says all test is test, and just get away from me. I mean, yeah. obviously, again, <laughs> I'm not putting the guy down, but he. I mean, don't be on. so picky. He told him. Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. Please come over. We'll have a drink. <laughs> he sounds like the catabolic doc to me. <laughs> yeah. That is the catabolic doc. We'll have to ask him about your bench presses. Okay. <laughs> he obviously doesn't care. But you know the truth is, he. so the answer for this guy is, sir, find a new doctor and take small doses. I Disclaimers are everywhere. Don't do anything that I say. Please read the books. Um, yeah. You you really want what you want to do is you want to you you want to take small doses of sipinate or nanthate and in your deltoid I mean in, in your in your anterior thigh I mean you probably not the glute but you can do that too 
and just keep it so it, it but the big question to Ron is my big question is what why does this guy have such low T mm -hmm. what's the cause of it maybe you can we'll never know. Should reverse that Samo I know you're gonna watch this so uh, if you don't mind following up a little more info just to satisfy our curiosity He's so, uh, so, so that was that. Did I answer the question on that, Ron? You did. Now, let me back up. What's wrong with the glute for injections? The, here's the deal with the glute. The glute's not wrong. It's certainly there's three places you can inject. I mean, you can actually inject. You know, guys inject. You know, here. What? Here. Really the lat. <laughs> the guys inject. I mean, Ron. Guys Who's putting steroids in their forearms? <laughs> they, you don't. You don't know. Ron, guys, do they love doing steroids in the forearms? Oh wow! Wow, I, I've never now, heard the of traps. It. The the lats guys go like this, Ron. Guys go like this, and they they take and they go they they inject in the lat, Ron. Well, God love them because they must be flexible. So so the, the, there's nothing wrong with the glute injector, but here's here's my secret. Here's my what I've experienced for I don't know ten years. When you're injecting the glute, you you're you're injecting the same side. It's very unless you're flexible, you can't get around to do the other side. But guys can, yeah. and. It's actually the glute, unless you're very good at it. I mean, you can just throw a big needle in there. You have to have a bigger needle. You can't use that little 23 gauge or 25 gauge one inch. I know you can. I yeah. know you can. Yeah. I know guys can. Sure. But it's it just not, it's not readily, it's not easy. It's not really the way you want to do it. And, and you're really sometimes hitting in between the gluteal fold and you can get what's called sterile abscesses. Mm. And those are those when guys do that in the same area all the time and in, in that region for some reason, yeah. And they, they they just get hardened. It gets like it's called there's there's abscesses that are like you're sick and you're feverish and it's a bad injection. Right. And that, that's an that you need cathlax, you need antibiotics, and that's an infection. Sometimes you gotta. Oh my God, I've sent guys to surgeons where we have to open it up. Oh, yeah. And and and, and put a wick in there because it's like it's like pus, like you know, a bubble like that, but. And they're walking around like that's kind of crazy, but so but you know so the glutes are really not good, Ron. Most men that are on stable doses of small doses of sipinate or nanthate, small little doses up in the delta, you know, small doses in the bilateral every five to seven days. Are okay, fair enough. All right, so let's continue. Next question comes to us from No Donut. Love them. Yeah, No Donut wants to know what is the doc's opinion. On omega-3 fish oil supplements, do they really provide cardiac and joint protection? Also wants to know your opinion on NSAID, N-S-A-I-D, use for pain, as regular NSAID use has been linked to heart attacks. If NSAID use was limited to just a few doses a week, is that still dangerous from the, for the heart? And finally, is there anything cutting edge in the realm of pain control that is safe for someone that's been lifting for 35 years and suffering from the usual joint and back pain? So first up, omega three fish oil supplements. Will they? All right, this is it. I did some, and during my crazy day today, I spent about twenty minutes doing preparing for this with with literature and references and so on and so forth. Yes, thank you. Here, here we go. No donut. Yeah, I, I, what you say? He doesn't have donuts. Okay, no. Yeah, he probably doesn't. So he's gonna have fish oil and fish. Okay, <laughs> so fish oil, huge controversy forever, right, Ron? Yeah. Does fish oil? So here, you know, if you look for the data on fish oil, and I want to hope that it that it works. So what does fish oil do? How does it work? Well, if you look for what I would look at to be a really credible overview of the study, Mayo Clinic proceedings, I believe it was 2014, reviewed like a meta analysis of many many studies, and this is all for the heart, right? This is all the cardiac stuff. Yeah, and they, they they did find that it did not lower the initial heart attack for people. They did a lot of studies on this, but it, it appeared like it lowered. If you had a heart attack, the severity of the heart attack was less. Okay. So so you survived. <laughs> now think about that. So I think it's true. If you look at fish oils, well, I've been dealing with this for years as a primary care physician, looking at the data. Yeah, and if we've always everyone agrees with longitudinal studies, retrospective studies, observational studies. People that eat fish have better hearts, and and the the fish, it's fatty cold fish, salmon, tuna, or any kind of fatty cold water fish. Right. So and it's it's apparently two 
or three servings a week. Okay. And when you do that, if you really want to live with the cardiac and get every single ounce of, of prevention, forget the pills, take fish. Yeah. So eat some. So, eat salmon three times a week, you're good. That's right. So, but let's go back to the studies with the pills here. So they process the pills and they've broken down the pills, Ron, into EPA and that DHA ratio. And these are free fatty acids, right, Ron? Yeah. So if you look for the data currently, there's it, it I believe, I like this. I think fish oil for the person that is health conscious and can't eat fish during the week like me should probably oh Ron, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I, I lost the image. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. So fish oil for people that really want to give that extra edge that they can get a good standard a good processed or limited processed fish oil that has an epa to a dha ratio of at least two to one two to one epa to dha and, yeah and, and and the literature shows that if it's really going to help you if you have elevated triglycerides hmm. because there's a drug called lovaza and there's another one too that is prescription for people that have hypertriglycidemia. Hmm. So if your triglycerides are over 500 when you're fasting, that's genetic. You have yep. family history. So then we could prescribe actual pharmaceutical grade fish oil for you, ma'am, sir. Oh, wow. Now, some people I have, just like that, they, they've taken it for years, even though they're, they're 200 or 150. So that's actually great. So fish oil, in my opinion, for the cardiac prevention, there's, it probably does work. I just, the Mayo Clinic, I mean, I believe all the, there's studies, Ron, that show it doesn't work. Huh. It's a waste of time. There's studies that show it does work. But when you look at that that overall meta-analysis, yeah. and you look at them, it's very close to near neutral, Ron. Huh. Wow. But, so I told you, I believe that they said it does not change the fact that you're going to have a heart attack, but it appears like that if you do, that heart attack will not be fatal. Okay, I mean that's now, now that's pretty think, substantial. That, that's good. We're moving. Yeah. I think we're moving along on this. If you're just a scientist like me and you're reading the data and you're just a data guy and you're crunching the numbers and you trust Mayo Clinic, you know, or Cleveland or Harvard or I mean, I hate to say it, these are these are maybe not the nicest guys to have a cup of coffee with. They're actually, <laughs> they're actually pretty nice guys. Yeah. They're, they're tough son of a bitches, Ron. Yeah. They don't take any. Sh they, why should they? That's why they're at those places, and I like those guys because you know what? I don't want to hear any crap either. I want to know real data, not not snake oil. So, sure. in the end of the day, there are risks. You ready for the risks, Ron? Sure. Bleeding. Oh come on. Bleed when you go when you go to have your your shoulder done or your knee, and you get a pre-op. The yeah. doctor's going to tell you stop aspirins. We're going to go into that a little bit here too. Stop aspirins and non NSAIDs and fish oils and stuff. Because it can lead to bleeding. Remember I said, it looks like you have a less of a heart attack. Well, these drugs appear to be blood thinners. Wow. Wow. It makes sense. So, you know, I'll leave you on this, the last piece of this. The amazing piece, because they're kind of like anticoagulants, antiplatelet medicines, and, and they have those mechanisms, and that's very true. So, the last piece, they do reduce inflammation, Ron. Okay. So, if you're training hard like us, and you wanna, you're getting older and your joints hurt, Studies have shown, apart from the heart protection, which is kind of neutral and controversial, it does seem like it helps people with osteoarthritis and joint pain. <laughs> and that's why this, this guy knows that. He's asking the question. The last piece I'll tell you is that I have to do my, my stuff for you guys and show off. Do you realize that there was a review years ago on fish oils? And for men, there's a, there was apparently an in, uptick in prostate cancer with men that use fish oil. No, that's come on. I don't know if it's true, Ron. Jeez. So, less severe heart attacks, but you probably get prostate cancer. Ron, you see what's going on, Ron? There's just no free lunch on this. Oh, jeez. So, the next question was the NSAID. Okay, here we go. What's the doc's opinion on NSAIDs? This guy's got pain, regular NSAIDs, at least a heart. So, NSAIDs that are that are linked to heart attacks, that's, that's old data that if you have enough heart disease and you have unstable plaque or heart failure, these medicines, Motrin, ibuprofen, 
you know, a leave. These are NSAIDs. And there's one in a minute called Mobic I'm going to talk about, Meloxicon, but I think it's brilliant. And I, I used to give it to all my big strong men, and I'll tell you one in a minute, is that it, it, it can destabilize the plaque, Ron, and it, and it can worsen prostaglandins, it increases, and then you can worsen heart failure. So that's why it's a risk for, for worsening coronary disease if you have it. Yeah, yeah. Not a guy like me and you, Ron. And then you, Ron, you have a little baby dose of, pl you have a little plaque in the artery. Yeah. You're going to stabilize it and you're going to live to 110 with me. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know if I want to live that long, doctor, but that, that's fine. You will, Ron, because our show, our show is just, just starting to really grow. <laughs> the hell with the Americans. We're in Egypt. And not that's true. Egypt. So, so let's, Ron, NSAIDs, yeah. so I talked about how NSAIDs cause heart disease, and they're, they're not linked to someone, they're not going to cause heart disease. If you have heart disease, they're potentially dangerous. Hmm. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, so, so the guy says if you take it a couple days a week, again, so this is the guy, so this is the guy, donuts are the kind of guy, there's a few drugs, and there's a leave, there's, mo you know, there's a leave, Naproxen, there is uh, ibuprofen, <clears throat> then there's something called Mobic, which is meloxicam, and they're all non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. I find Mobic for men and women that are healthy and middle aged and young, and they get the occasional, you know, strain and the some of the osteoarthritis stuff. This is a brilliant. This is a miracle drug. Sure. Wow. Absolute miracle drug. Seven point five milligrams yep. once a day. You could go up to two a day. And it's not toxic. Again, again, if, if, this is disclaimer, disclaimer. I'm trying to give it bang for the buck here. Yeah, yeah. You know, but go to your doc and ask them for Mobic. It's really cool. And Mobic. M-O-B-I-C, -M -M Mobic. Mobic, wow. Now, See, let's talk cool. about the next, pain. You ready, you ready to go for pain? Pain, sure. What else we got on pain? Well, I'm the master of pain because I used to be a primary care doc. Okay, you got pain. We got, what do you do? You treat it with, with diagnosing what it is. You have behavior, chiropractic, stretching, massage, meds. We have NSAIDs. We have acetaminophen, acetaminophen, Tylenol. Oh, yeah. We have muscle relaxers. We have, then we have the real deal, opioids. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got a problem right now in the country, and they, they blame it on us, the doctors. We, you, Sorry, you had back... It's, it's our fault. We had, you had back pain, and we gave you Percocet, and then you never could get off. Yep. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what to say about that, but I guess maybe in some part it may be true. Tramadol is a synthetic kind of lighter version opi opioid that thought you can't get addicted on. Well, it seems like you actually can. And Neurontin is, is, a, is an anti-seizure drug we use for, for kind of muscle relaxers and kind of things like that. Amy Triptyline is another, it's an old fashioned tricyclic. I'm throwing the full Monty at you guys. <laughs> These are the full list of meds. I, I, I took some time today. Now, topical, I, and I have all these power lifters and stuff where they come to me. What I found over the years is, this is incredible, you guys. There's a drug called, there's a topical NSAID called diclofenac. It's called Voltaren. Have you heard of this? No. Ron. Voltaren gel is for like osteo with like you know little old ladies that have like osteoarthritis. They got knee arthritis, hand, and you rub it on, and it goes just into the subcutaneous, into the muscle region, and it works locally. Huh. And the beauty of it is that it doesn't go systemically and get into your heart circulation and cause the, the issues systemically that we talked about. Right. So it's a it's a miracle drug. Now there are compounding companies. I do this, Ron. These are not controlled drugs. These are different combinations of this. And the strong men have all asked me over the years, hey, Doc, you know what? I found out this works. Can you just can make this for me? Make it for you. You need a license. You need a medical license. Hmm. So, on. so diclofenac, topical. And then there's something, there's, there's salon pause. Salon pause is, is topical over the counter. Capsaicin, camphor, menthol, hmm. menthol salicylate. And that's called salon pause. They actually have an FDA. I didn't realize that they have an FDA uh, certification for pain for the topical. I, I'm not. I'm not working for the drug for their company. Right. And so so. And there's lidoderm patches. So when we use that, we use that for like little ladies that come and they have shingles, and we give them some of the meds. We try to treat the pain, and then we put these. These are these are these patches we put on. 
to the shingle, you know, to the rashy blister, painful area. Yeah. And I've, I over the, I don't really, do, I'm the cardiac testosterone guru now. Right. You know, I'm the, I'm the steroid anti, I'm the steroid anti anti aging. I'm the steroid <laughs> testosterone guru. That's, this is my day job, which I'm so happy. And I'm blowing up, you know, we're going to Florida. I'm taking over anti aging facilities. And the truth is, I used to be involved with all this, Ron. <laughs> and so I wanted to give the guy a good bang for the buck on that. Right on. Have you ever heard of Arnica Drill? That's something I've used successfully. What's it called? Arnica. It's I have. Like, How does that work for you? Pretty well, actually. Pretty well. I mean, some, a lot of times I have like neck pain or something, and you know, it's topical, and like you say, it just penetrates just enough into the into the sore muscle or the, the strained muscle to give you some relief. But uh, yeah, these um, these other options sound a little more enticing. Well, this is you know, Ron. So pain. It, there are pain doctors, Ron. I mean, there are experts that all they do is pain. Now, you know, those guys are kind of a, unfortunately, those guys to me, to a doc like me, those are patients I, I hand over that have problems with opioids. Yeah. yeah you know, but, but again, the, the, the people really have pain, Ron. I mean, so this is not easy to treat. You have to, there's injections, steroid injections, there's massage, manipulation. I mean, behavior, chiropractic, I'm trying to give every, you know, yeah. And then the medicines, you know, obviously the NSAIDs, and uh, I just gave the whole king caboodle there. The whole gamut. Okay. Well, as always, we save Swaminator for last because okay. he's, he's the all-star of Ask the Anabolic Doc. Come on, guys. You other guys got to step up your game. Here we go. Doc, nice. in the not-so-distant past, Susan Powder had the entire nation believing that if you ate fat, you got fat. The entire world shunned dietary fat in order to get lean. Now we laugh at the notion. So along those lines, what if everything we think we know about the cause of heart attacks is wrong? Right now, the belief is cholesterol is the enemy, specifically LDL. So people are wolfing down statins and going to extreme measures to lower their cholesterol. As you know, I have had several friends recently suffer heart attacks. Two guys in particular had heart attacks immediately following HIIT training. I know you debunked my belief that HIIT actually harms the heart, but it just seems too coincidental for me. Here's the kicker. Both guys had very low cholesterol. The guy who died was on so many statins, his cholesterol didn't even register on a fingerprint blood test. The other guy who lived just had a calcium score test and a heart scan and came back clean as a whistle, but he still had a heart attack. He went to a progressive cardiologist who told him cholesterol has nothing to do with it. The real culprit is inflammation. Doc, mm. you very briefly mentioned this in a previous broadcast, but that information is floating around out there now, and I think it needs to be explored. Do you think it's possible we are living in the Susan Powder days when it comes to heart disease and everyone, everything we think is right is actually wrong? It baffles me that we can put a man on the moon, we can stream movies off our cell phones, and there are cars that don't require a driver, but we still can't figure out the number one cause of death in the entire male population. Sign First of all, <laughs> Swami's the number one. Yeah. This guy, this guy, I hope, I hope this, this guy needs to like go to L.A. and write a novel. I mean... That was almost guy, I don't know right what this guy. I don't know who this guy is or what he does, but he's he's, he's this guy's a writer. Yeah, yeah. This guy's enjoying the. I mean, this guy's look at this. is fun stuff. Twice right, it's fun. Fun. So. Now, see, Swami, this is my whole. This is a cardiac show, which is this is all I do. Yeah. So let me hit you, Swami, because I'm ready to hit you back for this, and I, I'm I'm happy that I just de debunked the hit because hit is beautiful. <laughs> hit is high intensity interval training. If you have plaque that is unstable. It could kill you. Yeah. Okay. Number one. Number two. These guys you're talking about, if they if they had an unstable plaque, and they had low LDL, maybe they had something called LP little A. They had other atherogenic particles. Hmm. These are called. That's that's why you got to look. You have to look at my post for for um, Anna Hat O'Connor is a, is just interviewed me about SARMs. It's going to come out in the New York Times, and he's doing an article about SARMs, and, and he, I was one of the people he talked, it was really cool, what a cool guy. He did a whole article, he's the he's New York Times health expert, journalist, health and fitness, yep. great guy. He wrote a whole article on LP little a, huh. and that is a, that's a type of cholesterol that is not measured readily, yet you could have it, it's called residual risk factor, because they check your basic cholesterol, hey, you're good, ah, then you have a heart attack. There was a residual risk, and it's called LP little a. So 
please follow this stuff and follow him because he's a great guy and he's a brilliant writer. Um, but beyond that, so so the the men that are di that are died. First of all, Swami, I love to know the history. I love to know what's going. There's clearly not. There's something being missing. Common things are common. They have heart disease. They have plaque. How did the plaque get there? It's never just one thing. Inflammation, game on. Hmm. Inflammation is definitely an isolate is part of the picture, but it also it it, it generates and it, and it worsens the for when. Anything that generates inflammation in your body, yeah. systemically, like rheumatoid arthritis, we understand now is going to worsen your coronary picture. Hmm. If you have inflammation and bad gum disease, that's enough inflammation to worsen. It's not the bacteria here go into your heart, but I'm not going to talk about bacteria and heart disease. That's a whole other philosophy hmm. that's in there too. Inflammation is bad. You're right. But... So are the basic risk factors, blood pressure, please trust me, cholesterol, and I'm talking cholesterol, not just LDL and LDL, but residual risks, APO lipoprotein B and LP little a, it's all I do, and so does your cardiologist over there at Harvard, Ron, Ron, yeah. they, they know Ron, these yeah. guys, are, they're watching this, which this show is equally for physicians as it is for every other common person in the world, because everything I'm saying, I'm not a nice guy, everything I'm saying is vetted by data, and if we don't have the data, I'm telling you, that's stuff we don't know, but what you're saying is, this guy dies, and it looks like, and, and the, who is Susan P Powder, Powder, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Is that like some like Charlie's Angels or something? Wrong? She was, uh, you know, one of those fitness gurus for about ten minutes. Oh, she had yeah, short oh, yeah, yeah, blonde, yeah. Uh, platinum blonde hair. Like Susan Summers. Well, Suzanne Summers does longer. Suzanne Powder had real short. Uh, oh hair. my God! I think she was oh my God! Yelling, uh, Let me tell you. I mean, Ron, I, you know, I'm getting up there in the world of the of of the of the celebrityisms and and the media. It's yeah. not going to be pretty, Ron, for me. I just don't get, I just don't, I'm like, I don't get a lot, I don't like it. I don't like the BS. So I'm, I'm a dad, I love your real doctors. I mean, I love real da data and like arguing and punching in the face. You know, it's just, you know, inflammation. So let me tell you, Swami, these, I mean, Jesus, I, I'm, you're around, people are dying every, it is true. Coronary disease is horrible right now, especially the accessibility to care. No, the average person doesn't have accessibility to a general doctor because their deductible is too high. Mm. That's another show. Okay, yeah. so you, you, if he if he's not dropping from a heart attack, which is myocardial infarction secondary to obstruction in the artery, that yep. there are other reasons for cardiac arrest, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. That's that athlete, remember Len Bias, and the, that's a huge septum. Remember those young, the young, the young, the young athletes, not steroid using, that drop dead. Right. That's electrical. Mm. These men may. It's called electrical. There's an electrical system of the heart. It's called electrophysiology. I mean, this is like I'm a regular doctor who knows these things. Any, every, the average internist knows all the stuff I know. Yet people still don't know this stuff. I'm kind of, and the, the internet's wide open, I'm kind of perplexed, but this is well written, it's not just about LDL, it's not just about hypertension, it's not just about diabetes, although those three things, that's, that's you better put some of your resources into that, yeah. you better get an echo, you better get a good doctor to check, have an EKG, if these men had family histories of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, if they had other electrical rhythms, issues, congenital, Wolf, Parkinson, White. There's a bunch, I could rip off a bunch of these, Ron. This is primary care medicine 101. So, but I agree though, if, if, he, if they have unstable plaque, inflammation's playing a role, how do you get to, Swami, let's work on inflammation. Don't eat, don't, no, but Ron, I'm telling you the truth. So inflammatory disease, and that's in part why the fish oils indeed have some a support in my mechanism of thinking for the coronary protection, if indeed it's true at all in that person. They're anti-inflammatory. It, it's multifactorial, Ron. Yeah. You see how complicated, I love this show, because it's I get to really to show, 
and share. And I, I love the emails. Guys are coming. They're saying, Doc, it's so fun. It's so exciting and intriguing. And it's just, you're just really seeing internal medicine. <laughs> but this is internal organs, heart, pulmonary, kidney. But the heart's my love. That's what I love to do, prevention. And it's, it's Swami's a great guy. You got to start with tangible pieces, blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, and then of the cholesterol, you should look for the residual risks. Anahan O'Connor, you can Google Anahan O'Connor, LP Little A, New York Times. There's a guy that died, there's a guy that did a whole piece on that was pissed off because he's like, he had a heart attack. Who didn't, who doesn't tell me about this LP Little A stuff? And it's a cheap test. Boston, Boston has a test. There's Quest will do it, Lab Corp will do it. And if you have L, usually you see it with a family history. <clears throat> and then, but you will detect, apart from LDL and HDL levels, you yep. will detect these other atherogenic lipid particles. <clears throat> and they're not, this is not esoteric, Ron. Right. This is not crazy Dr. O'Connor esotericism. This is common, common things. And you could, you could definitely do something about that and see a lipidologist and see a cardiologist or an internist, and you can work around those. And I'm for saving lives every day. You're going to be Ron, You're going to be on a statin that's going to stabilize. You see that? I, I told you you're going to be on. A statin. <laughs> Ron, was Damn it. Uh, I never doubted you, doctor. I, you know. I, but Ron, the, we're all <laughs> cuffing the same cloth, me and these guys. And I learned from those guys. That's Harvard for crying out loud. Yeah. Those guys are the smartest guys on the block. He's going to basically see it. I mean, they really are. And yeah. That's why it's. Uh, that's why that's where they are. I'm not saying we're not smart out here, UConn. <laughs> UConn. And it, 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 Texas aren't smart. <laughs> it, but this is the, the attitude, you know, the Northeast. We have this kind of rough and tumble. At least I do, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Ron. But you're gonna. It's gonna stay. We're using science. And anyone that's if don't give statins a bad name because you don't know what you're talking about. Mm. You want to listen? Not you, Ron. So I, I hope I'm gonna have to smash you on this, Ron. <laughs> But don't, your, your muscles are going to be fine, Ron. Okay. But if you don't do well on them, we will, we'll make an alteration. We'll make a change to, you know, but you, you, you don't want to progress the plot. So I hope I answered Swami's question. Swami's I think, so. I think so. Swami will have more questions next time, written eloquently and in depth, I'm sure. So, uh, uh, before we uh, wrap it up, I want to remind everyone, we're trying to remind everyone to subscribe. Just like uh, your YouTube channel is what, Doctor? It's Metabolic Doc. If you go to the Metabolic Doc, I actually, I should, I should, I have, I have all these social media guys. It's kind of embarrassing. I don't know the actual. <laughs> Ain't even know that one. <laughs> I love Metabolic Doc. Yep. Metabolicdoc.com is my main web page. Right. The AnabolicDoc.com is a is, is my Anabolic Recovery page on the website. It's a it's a it's a domain that's directed at Metabolic Doc. Gotcha. Okay. So if you go to the home page on the social media, we have a beautiful, Ron, yeah. I have a, a guy in Boston made it. I have the most beautiful website. It's probably my 10th website in about 15 years. Wow. It's such a gorgeous website. I'm never going to change it again. Hmm. We're at, we have social media links. We have everything is gorgeous. It's very tight and cleaned. I have little videos of me explaining everything. It's order. You can, you can get a consultation online for anabolic recovery, testosterone replacement, and cardiometabolic. Okay. And and it's very and 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 if you go to the social media links, yeah. you can just you can click on right there. I think it's Thomas O'Connor MD. I mean, but the, my guys are changing. You know, I just hired a whole new social media team. We got a brand new brand new videos coming out tonight that I shot 2 days ago. You ready for this, Ron? Yes. Clomid. Oh boy. Hold up, Ron. Yep. Clomid. PCT versus TRT. Huh. <laughs> and I did a whole, I did all my uh, scientific review and clinical examples of what I see every day with steroid users on Clomid versus regular men on TRT on Clomid. Hmm. Interesting. So that's going to be. That should, please check out that video. It'll be up, be up tonight. Okay. So for those of you watching this on the Muscular Development YouTube page, I'm encouraging you all to subscribe and click on this little bell thing at the bottom that tells you to uh, – you'll get notifications of everything. So 
That's uh, going to wrap up another amazing episode of Ask the Anabolic Doc with Dr. Thomas O'Connor. Be sure to check out his websites, anabolicdoc.com and metabolicdoc.com. And, of course, once again, get your copy of America on Steroids, It's Time to Heal. That'll do it. Thank you so much for your time, Doctor. Thanks, everyone, for watching.